to one. So, and Bolton Wanderers are leading 2-1 at Stoke, but at the moment it won't be enough for Bolton, with Rangers leading here 2-1, so it wasn't Carlos Tevez today, could it be Balotelli? He comes on, I remember he hasn't played for them since he was sent off on the day when City pretty much conceded the title at Arsenal. And he did, of course, get a crucial goal here, remember, in that comeback against Sunderland, the 3-3 draw. Back to Stoke, Darren Fletcher. Well, there's a penalty for Stoke City, Mike, and if they score it, it would be a big nail in the Bolton Wanderers Premier League coffin. Bogdan Foul crouch. Here comes Walters from the penalty spot, and he scores! Stoke City 2, Bolton Wanderers 2, and Bolton Wanderers heading out of the Barclays Premier League. And the Queen's Park Rangers fans away to the right celebrate once more. They've had quite a bit to celebrate. They went very quiet here when Zabaleta scored before half-time to give Manchester City the lead. QPR with only 10 men, Barton having been sent off, have turned it round in the second half with goals from Cissé and Mackey. But City are going forward again. They've thrown Balotelli on for Carlos Tevez. They're in the last 15 minutes of the game. De Jong, there is no, no space here for Manchester City. Ball hoisted in and Ferdinand's waiting for it. QPR will be confident of winning those balls in the air as City set off once more in the deep. Nasri to Clichy. 2-1 to Queen's Park Rangers. Silva back to Nasri. Nasri plays the ball into the area to Balotelli for the first time. On the edge of the area, it's Mario Balotelli. Balotelli taking on Rangers defenders, goes down under the challenge and... Wins a free kick right on the edge of the penalty area. Oh, I think just there was a tiny little bit of a shirt pull and Balotelli just stumbled. Again, it was a little bit a little bit soft, I think, uh, from Mike Veen as well. Only about two inches outside the 18-yard box as well. It's 1-0 to Manchester United. It is 2-1 to Queen's Park Rangers. The free kick has been given to David Silva. In it goes to the far post. QPR stand firm. It comes out to Nasri. Nazari brings it down, will use De Jong, square, De Jong thinks about the shot, can't get the ball past the Rangers defenders, and now all on his own, Sean Derry can't hold it up, and Manchester City storm forward once more, Silva trying to get away from the marker, it's on to Aguero who's been pretty quiet in the game, Aguero's going to try, pull his back, he's going on, and Rangers have scrambled it away for a corner kick. That was a good chance for Dzeko. Well, do you know what? I thought that was in for a moment. I think it was a, the deflection of, of Clint Hill. Um, I think it was. Took it onto almost the, the foot of the post. And from our angle, it looked in. And uh, certainly a few City fans jumped up as the back of the net rippled. 13 minutes to go. Corner kick was aimed towards Balotelli. Balotelli swings the boot at it. And now Rangers need to thump it downfield. And they do. Well, what was it that uh, Sir Alex Ferguson said about Mark Hughes? He wrote in his book, Mark Hughes is a warrior with whom you would trust your life. Well, at the moment, Manchester United's title really depending on Mark Hughes and Queen's Park Rangers. And at the moment, Queen's Park Rangers are doing them proud. Even more important, they're doing themselves proud. Because they're staying up. Bolton are being held 2-2 at Stoke now. Manchester United won up through Rooney at Sunderland. But back come Manchester City once more. A goal now. And everything would change in terms of atmosphere in the stadium. It's Vincent Company looking for a 1-2 with De Jong. De Jong now for Nasri. On to Balotelli. Dzeko's pointing. Balotelli's just inside the penalty area. Balotelli's ball in towards Aguero. Rangers desperate to get a foothold here. But Balotelli's won it back again. Shot palmed away by Kenny. And then Wright Phillips just lumps the ball back into the city half. I mean, all Hart has had to do today, this second half, is pick the ball out of the back of his net twice. When Queen's Park Rangers scored those unlikely goals, the first time a mistake by Lescott. And then Mackey getting the second. Cross comes in, headed away by Derry to this near side. He gets enough power on it. And with just over 10 minutes to go, Manchester City have a throw. Well, incredible. You know, City are just going to have to keep working the ball, keep trying to get back in this. You know, they're flashing balls across. They just need a, a little bit of luck or one of their special players to come up with something. QPR just throwing themselves in front of every single ball, blocking shots, heading crosses, making it so difficult for City. They've been at it since August, and it's all come down to this. As Dzeko plays some head tennis in the penalty area, and Rangers with Mackey with a big high ball. But, of course, in for, for City, it's much more about the sort of nine or ten months they've been playing in the Premier League. It's 44 years. And now Zabaleta once more in the sunshine. That's about the only bright thing for City here at the moment in the stadium. It's Silva once more. They're trailing by two goals to one, the home team. Balotelli twisting and turning on the edge of the area. And then he expected, I think, Clichy to make a run down the left-hand side. Didn't materialise. And QPR have a throw. Mark Hughes lasted for only three months after the takeover 
and then just before Christmas was given the sack and it's a throw to Queen's Park Rangers which Anua takes it's Wigan 3 Wolves 1 by the way Boyce has scored here for Wigan the Wolves have gone in front in that match Manchester City again with Silva Silva now to Zabaleta down the right cross coming in from Zabaleta is headed away what a return to the Etihad for Mark Hughes here today on this final day of the season he could be denying Manchester City the title that they covered so much it's silver for Manchester City there is still time for the home side but they must get one back quickly you feel Nigel de Jong now to Zabaleta down the right hand side cross comes in takes a deflection Silva's header is out of the penalty area and now Mackie this big strong player down the right hand side sidesteps the challenge and Clichy runs out of space and immediately they return the ball now and Mancini's going ballistic down there as he side take the throw quickly Clichy, left hand side, Dzeko in the area, doesn't look a very good cross that, it's gone behind and it's a goal kick to Queen's Park Rangers. Yeah, poor cross from Gail Clichy, Mancini furious at that, they've got to get quality into the box and time running out, nine minutes of, of normal time remaining, they need a goal soon, something is going to have to change dramatically or you know they're gonna have to get one and something they're gonna have to score one as well nine minutes to go plus time to be added on the headlines so far at the moment Manchester United are going to retain the title leading 1-0 at Sunderland here QPR are staying up they're leading Manchester City by two goals to one Arsenal are just edging Spurs at the moment for third place Arsenal leading 3-2 at West Brom in Roy Hodgson's last game cliche now for Manchester City and QPR quite happy it seems with only 10 men to allow City to have the ball, they're running out of time, they're getting anxious, they still have to believe here. The City faithful who've turned up so many times and one or two of them were pessimistic coming to the game today that it, they could shoot themselves on the foot once more. Nasri's ball to Dzeko, QPR appeal for offside. Dzeko now with a horrible slanted shot which may hit the corner flag over on the far side. Hasn't even done that, it's a throw to Queen's Park Rangers. I think City, and let's uh, go back to John Murray it, at Sutherland. John? Still Sunderland nil, Manchester United won, Wayne Rooney's first half goal, but it is the most precarious of leads, and let me tell you Mike, there are United nerves here as well, Martin O'Neill and Sunderland are giving it a goal, Connor Wickham is being thrown on for them, so it's all in the balance, 1-0 Manchester United lead, and heading to retain their title as it stands, but of course, as well as Sunderland may be doing, as long as it stays 2-1 here to Queen's Park Rangers, of course, Sunderland are going to have to get a couple of goals there at the Stadium of Life, but Manchester City have yet another corner kick over on the far side. Uh, Silva to take it. Kenny was nowhere, but somehow QPR managed to clear it back towards the centre circle. Gathered in by Clichy. Clichy has been fouled by uh, Sean Wright Phillips. Free kick to City, 30 yards away. Maybe Balotelli opportunity here. Well, City, again, they're just snatching at things at the moment. You know, a little bit panicky. Joe Hart sat on his haunches, almost just a, a complete spectator. I wonder if we'll see a Mancini Stuart Pearce style sending up front for the last five minutes. Well, in some respects, this may be City's best chance, this set piece, because there are so many QPR bodies in the penalty area. At least now they have an opportunity to line something up here with Balotelli and De Jong. Balotelli, who's just come on with no backlift, hits the free kick straight into the wall. Right Phillips feels that. Balotelli, right Phillips has stayed down following that. The action continues with Dzeko slipping, but still keeping the ball in the penalty area. Cross comes in, great header away by Anton Ferdinand. Uh, right Phillips is back on his feet, feet again. He's seeing stars, though. As Zabaleta, the City goal scorer, finds Silva. At there's no yard there at all for Manchester City. They're going to have to work it wide down the right-hand side. Cross comes in. Dzeko jumps early and it's an easy save for Paddy Kenny. And we are six minutes away from going into added time here. Well, incredible. You know, City have got to find something different. They've got to try something else. You know, the likes of Balotelli have got to try something special because at the moment, you know, City are firing balls into the box. You know, you've got Ferdinand in there, Anua, Derry. You know, Clint Hill, all just heading the balls away, getting little touches and clearances. City yet really to create what I would call a golden opportunity to even attempt to get themselves back into this. This amazing Premier League season, people wondered whether there would be another sting in the tail, and at the moment there isn't. Jay Bothroyd has come on. I hadn't seen that, by the way, for QPR. I have no idea who's gone off, but Bothroyd's come on. As a cross comes into the... Uh, 
The Rangers penalty area and right Phillips hacks it away. Yeah, it's Bobby Zamora just Bobby's picked up right. a little bit of a, an injury. Um, did, you see, a, did you see him go It on? was five or ten minutes ago. There was a oh, bit right. of confusion going on. It was one, one of the many incidents um, that's happened so far this season. It's been you know action-packed this afternoon so far. Well, we don't have to look away to the right at all because all the action's to our left as another cross is floated in and it's another poor cross from from Manchester City's Nasri. It's an easy save for Kenny. Underarm throw now to the Nigerian international Taiwo, the man who's on loan from AC Milan over on the far side, reminding you on Five Live that Sunderland nil, Manchester United one is the latest score at the Stadium of Light. Rooney's goal early in that game. Uh, Manchester City went in front here and it looked good for them. They needed a second and then Rangers came out in the second half and Lescott gifted them an equaliser through Cisse. And then Mackie astoundingly gave Queen's Park Rangers a 2-1 lead. Barton's been sent off as well. Cross comes in. Great defending again from Ferdinand. He's having a storming second half, Anton Ferdinand. At the back with Clint Hill. And it's a throw to Manchester City. Thrown back to their excellent captain, Company. The man, of course, who celebrated that goal against Manchester United here nearly a fortnight ago. Silva now going through, but there's an extra defender there every time for Rangers. And the ball is back on the halfway line, and Joe Hart will come out. We are into the last five minutes of normal time. David Platt, Brian Kidd, Roberto Mancini all down there. Manchester United are one up still. In comes across City, need two goals from somewhere. Two goals from somewhere, assuming Sunderland don't equalise. Now it's Sabaleta again down the right-hand side. Ball drilled into the near post. And it's Sean Derry who throws himself at it and concedes the corner. Well, it's amazing watching the two benches. You know, the, the City staff, managers, coaches, full of frustration. QPR bench full of tension. Corner kick is lifted in. High by Silver and it clears Balotelli's head. And, you know, it's going to be a throw. Mancini's doing a Basel faulty down there. Down on his knees. Oh, he, he's willing the team. He wants them to pass it. He wants them to try things, do something different. You know, I, you can almost tell he wants to be out there. He's getting very, very passionate. On that famous day when Manchester City last won the Premier League in 1968, I remember in sport that day, Don Fox missed a last-minute kick for Wakefield Trinity in that never-to-be-gotten Rugby League Challenge Cup final. And Wakefield lost to Leeds, and it's one of those days for Manchester City, it seems, and Bothroyd has got the best of Lescott, and Bothroyd's in the penalty area, and he almost got that through as well to Traore, and City have to do some rare defending, as Derry now feeds Taiwo over on the left-hand side of the field. City fans and people in front of us can barely look, because Rangers have the possession, and Gabidon is about to come on for QPR, and we have just over two minutes to go. And Queen's Park Rangers are leading by two goals to one. They're ending their season here in style. They've had some notable victories at home recently. They've been desperately poor away from home, but when it really mattered for Mark Hughes, on his return to the Etihad, resuming his big rivalry with Roberto Mancini, it seems like Mark Hughes, the former Manchester United star, is going to have the final word here. And it seems that against all the odds, Manchester United are going to win Premier League and title number 20 in all, of course. Nigel Dion conceding the ground. We hardly seem to notice now that Joey Barton's not been out there for QPR for a considerable time. In comes across towards Balotelli. Again, Ferdinand and Hill were there. And Rangers just thump it downfield. Joe Hart comes scrambling out of his uh, penalty area. And Wigan 3, Wolves 2 is the latest score. Obviously, we'll be going around the country as soon as these games finish for everything else. I think what we have to remember as well, there could be four or five minutes of injury time after that Barton sending off. There was a lot of confusion. So this game could run and run. The United game could be finished, and this one's still carrying on. Ball lifted dangerously into the Rangers' penalty area. Taiwo was there, and somehow, and, and really, Rangers should have cut that one out. Ball is cleared into the penalty area. Manchester City shouldn't really have had the opportunity. Mackey's lost possession, and it's cliche now for Manchester City to Balotelli. They need something very special now from Balotelli. Bally's shot, shot is driven in, and Bothroyd was there to concede a corner kick. So many light blue shirts all around us here in the stadium. They came believing today that the blue moon would be rising for them at the expense of Manchester United. But time is running out as Nasri wins a corner. And Rangers don't seem to be concerned about conceding them either. No, it was never going to be an easy game for City. Mark Hughes coming here, old players as well. I think, you know, certainly they've dug in. Uh, but City, so far, 
for me, haven't really done enough or created enough to win this game. Corner kick to Manchester City. A Rangers head there again for another corner. I can just imagine the scene now at the Stadium of Light. I'm sure there are radios, earpieces listening to this commentary. Willing Queen's Park Rangers to hang on here. We have five seconds of normal time to go. Fourth official is poised. Manchester City need to find two goals from somewhere here. As long as Manchester United are leading one else, five minutes of added time. Balotelli's header, and Kenny was there. And it's another corner. Well, turned away by Rangers. Unbelievable save from Kenny, and how that's dropped wide, I do not know. His mistake allowed the City to get the first goal, but that was a fantastic save from point blank range from Balotelli. Seems like they'll be finishing at Sunderland before us. They've got three minutes of added time as Kenny saves well this time. Three minutes of added time at Sunderland. Mancini turns away, buries his face in his hands. What a response his team have had since the defeat at Arsenal. Winning the games 15-1, of course, on aggregate. But now, with just over four minutes of added time, his team have to score two against ten men of Queen's Park Rangers. Where has this performance come from, from Queen's Park Rangers? Very much like the Chelsea one in Europe against Barcelona. It's silver relentlessly against Zabaleta, who's winning a corner kick off Taiwo. Well, QPR, that, Q, oh, sorry, my QPR have just got to stand firm. Balls coming to the box. No, this is the time they've got to head heads, get anything in the way, concentrate, throw yourself at the ball. 44 years, corner kick to Manchester City. Sheckles out! Goal for Manchester City! And there's still time! Sheko was there unopposed this time. Paddy Kenny has been beaten. We have three and a half minutes of added time to go. And here it is 2-2. Well, it's going to go right down to the wire. Dzeko almost unmarked for the first time in, in the area. Kenny absolutely nowhere in the goal. Simple free header. And now three minutes left. And of course, if Sunderland score, then it's City's title if it stays 2-2 here. So it's all down also to the Stadium of Light now as well. Manchester United are leading 1-0. They're playing out in time. And they've probably only got about another minute or so of added time there. Here... I make it that we've got another three minutes at least of added time and Manchester City still believe and Mancini and Brian Kidd point them forward. Anton Ferdinand and QPR have to line up once more as Cliché is invited on to the QPR defenders and they all stand in front of us and it's Samir Nasri for Manchester City steps over the ball, Mackie's cleared it not very far. Ball back with Nasri. Is this set up for Balotelli? In comes the cross into the area. Hill is waiting for it. And QPR, of course, who need a point. Bolton are drawing 2-2. Here comes Sean Wright Phillips now taking the ball to the halfway line. Challenge came in from Zabaleta. And the ball's gone out of play for a Rangers throw-in. And we have just over two minutes of added time here. And they must just about have finished at Sunderland when Manchester United are leading 1-0. And I just can't imagine the scenes up there in the northeast with the United fans and the management. And the, the QPR bench are punching the air down there. They must have heard some news, I think, from Stoke and Bolton. It's finished there, 2-2. So QPR are going to be safe. Manchester United have beaten Sunderland by one goal to nil. The season comes down to these moments now. And in goes Aguero. Oh! Sergio Aguero with seconds to go has ended 44 years of heartbreak. What a moment for the son-in-law of Diego Maradona. There are people kissing and hugging in front of us. Manchester City lead QPR by three goals to two. And right at the end, the man from Argentina looks like he's done it. Well, absolutely incredible. There was a last big tackle. The ball came in of the box, it broke to Aguero, hasn't really had a chance all afternoon, kept his cool, drove the ball in at the near post, and that has sent Manchester City absolutely delirious, the United game is already finished, I'm not sure the news has filtered into them yet, but looking at them, unbelievable, there are supporters on the pitch here, that's the biggest goal in Manchester City's history. Diego Maradona, his father-in-law, was here. Remember, he said just a few weeks ago, I think he 
should go and play for Real Madrid. Well, he doesn't play for Real Madrid. He's definitely wearing the light blue of Manchester City. And they lead by three goals to two. And it looks right at the end here as if they'd won the title. I tell you what, though, he did incredibly well. Tayo came in with a really poor challenge. Caught Aguero. He could have easily gone down for the penalty. He didn't. He stayed on his feet, kept the ball going, kept momentum going, drove the ball into the goal. Fantastic from Aguero. Well, the game hasn't restarted yet. Unbelievable. So that great day for City in 1968, May the 11th. And you know, there was, um, I'll put my musical hat on for a minute, there was an album made called Live May the 11th, 1968. It was an American album made by a band called H.P. Lovecraft. And one of the tracks on that album was titled It's About Time. Well, it's about time for Manchester City. They are almost there. And all of the bench and all of the staff are waiting to run on here for Manchester City. Referee Mike Dean has looked at his watch for the first time. Most of the people here weren't even alive the last time Manchester City enjoyed this moment. 44 years ago, they all run into the centre. And Liam Gallagher is here, for example, from Oasis fame. He wasn't even born the last time in 1968. Roberto Mancini was three. This is what it means, and they can't do anything about the hundreds and hundreds of City fans coming onto the pitch now. What a knife edge. What a game. I think we should make the point that QPR, I think, is safe, well, even though they've lost today. But these are amazing scenes at the Etihad Stadium, and Manchester City are champions for the third time in their history. It's absolutely bizarre. You've got City fans coming to the pitch. Stewart's hopelessly trying to wave people off. But you've got the QPR players running over to their fans and celebrating Absolutely incredible, really bizarre. Let's go to Mark Pugac, Mark. Mancini had an Italian flag wrapped around him, Mike, and a hug from Yaya Torre, as you can see. The outpouring of emotion is quite extraordinary down here. I'm right on the edge of the touchline. There are half a dozen Manchester City fans have got a huge banner which says Manchester is blue. I can see Colo Torre hugging Mancini as well. And now Mancini has gone down the tunnel. This explosion of joy, this spontaneity of excitement. He just thought he'd get out of it just for the time being. And as you can see, a massive pitch invasion. What an extraordinary finish to the season. Manchester City champions, Mike. Well, normally, Danny, we say we don't like to see fans on the pitch, but I don't think today we'll, we'll turn a blind eye to it. Oh, definitely. And I think this is almost reminiscent of Manchester United in the Champions League. You know, only, well, in injury time, needed two goals and they came up with it. Manchester United surely must have thought the title was theirs. Hughes came for about one goal and then another. Absolutely phenomenal. And it is just absolutely bizarre. You've got City fans celebrating, absolutely delirious. I hope all the players have made it off the pitch. But then you've got obviously the QPR fans and their players celebrating on the far side as well. They will have to come <coughs> to do the uh, presentation. The trophy is here. I remember hearing from Nedum Anua, the former City player, in the week, and he said that his dream scenario would be for Rangers to stay up, but for City to become champions. That's exactly what's happened. I don't think there's ever been a climax to a Premier League season like this. Mike Ingham and Danny Mills describing those extraordinary scenes inside the Etihad. Manchester City champions of England for the first time since 1968. Dzeko and Aguero in added time, scoring the goals they had to score to beat QPR and deny Manchester United, who won 1-0 at Sunderland. Bolton are relegated after drawing two all at Stoke. Arsenal finished third. Tottenham will have to make do with fourth. Stay with us. BBC. To have the Queen of England visiting Ghana was a great event. As the Queen celebrates her Diamond Jubilee, the BBC examines the effect she's had on people around the world. The whole purpose of the Queen's visit was to encourage Ghana in its move towards democracy. The Royal Visit, part of London Calling. With Elizabeth, we love you. On air and online from the 26th of May, from the BBC. <laughs> For a deeper understanding of spirituality and religious belief, and how faith impacts on people's lives around the globe, tune in every Saturday for Heart and Soul. This is the BBC in Shanghai. Shanghai. Shanghai.
Buffalo, Buffalo. 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 Buffal